Hello, ha guys. Um, as you can see, this is my face for today. Um, I recently did like um, I recently tried to help out a friend, and um, she was asking me to upload a video of how I did my everyday routine, um, and how long it took me to do my everyday routine. And I told her it's around 15 minutes. It takes me around thereabouts, around 15 minutes. And um, as I've, I've as I've filmed this, um, it's around 15 minutes. Bear in mind that unfortunately my camera like lost power midway, which kind of made me frazzled. And then I kind of forgot where I placed my brushes. So you'll see me like reaching down to look for my brushes like in the middle of the video. Sorry about that. But at least it takes you through my entire routine in 15 minutes. Um, it's rather basic. It gets me to this. It kind of looks full face. But it is nowhere like a wedding tutorial makeup tutorial that will take me around a um, 30 minutes to do um, an R depending on age uh -huh. when I say depending on age is um, when I do my mother's makeup it takes me an R just because there's very select like anti wrinkle contouring that's going on um, but at least with this one, this is my everyday, so I try not to damage my skin, I try to keep it lighter, and hopefully this will be helpful for anyone who has um, a fairly busy schedule. You can pare things down even more, like if you have bangs, I wouldn't even... Somebody's messaging me. Sorry about that. Um, if you have bangs, I wouldn't even bother with my eyebrows. I never used to bother with eyebrows until I had to grow out my bangs. See. Um, if um, you like a natural look, I would lessen the lipstick. Um, I would spend less time on probably like if I find my lashes kind of heavy on that day or I'm tired, I don't bother with mascara. But today I've got everything, okay, from highlighter down to the highlighter, yeah, <laughs> down to the blush, the contour, everything is there. So hopefully this helps. Anywho, um, on to the tutorial. Hi guys, well, I just come out of the shower so my hair is wet and pardon the dew drops on my shoulder but I am not naked, okay? I've gone ahead and toned my face with my Shiseido skincare routine and then I have my Avenue uh, moisturizer which I use because I currently have sensitive skin from the skin dandruff thing that I'm going through that's caused by stress, not contagious. Um, I went ahead. I'm currently priming my face with the Guerlain Lore primer, which I don't know. It kind of has magic effects, where afterwards it feels like your face is a little bit lifted. It's also the only primer I own that does not have dimethicone. Turns out that's what my face has been reacting to for the boils that were growing underneath it. And then I'm going in with my concealer. This is the Shiseido White Lucent. It's got SPF in it and it also has it, it has slight dimethicone to it, but it's one of the lesser ingredients. So my face doesn't react as much. Also, it's 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 quite sheer but full coverage and really lightweight. So I actually love this. I love this concealer. So I basically I basically target the areas of my face that have redness on it because I don't want to go over my entire face with concealer or else it'll get extremely heavy really fast. Oh and pardon the 
pardon zooming in and out. I was trying to hit 15, 15 minutes or less. So in my head, it was like, just do your makeup, get it done, buff it out. Um, try to get it as even as possible and get it under 15. I also had like a dinner that I needed to go to right after this. And the dinner that I was going to was ac is actually the dinner where my friend requested for this video. Um, she requested for this video to see my skin, my routine, my makeup routine that I do every single day. Just so like reminders that you can actually repeat and stuff so you can actually buff your concealer out with your fingers i like buffing them out with my fingers because it warms up the product and i feel like it spreads it out more so after you've blended it all out you can go in with powder foundation I use powder foundation now because of the, the dimethicone. The only other foundation I have that does not have dimethicone is the Luminous Silk Foundation by um, Emporio Armani, which I use for um, either performances or um, days when I need um, longer wear or fuller coverage. Now, here's a, here's a little tip with either concealer or like um, liquid foundation. If you let it sit in like the areas that you have problem, like color problems for a longer time, um, it dries, right? So the coverage is actually longer in that area. Okay. It's also thicker in that area. That's why... Um, a lot of times you want to buff it out really quickly depends on the product but a lot of times you want to buff it out really quickly but for like really problematic areas you let it sit for a while and it will last longer it will have a long a fuller coverage on on that problematic area so now that I've kicked my face like a freaking geisha uh, time to add some contour oh also, when you're putting on foundation, it whether it be powder or liquid, best to apply it going downwards because your pore, your hair goes downwards. So you don't want to be pulling your facial hair up and then they'll all be standing at attention. Yeah, you don't want that. So what you want is to pull the foundation down. For powder foundation, you can wet the sponge and then just go in with it and it becomes it does like a liquid foundation finish so here i have my trusty contour shades that i always use i don't think i will ever even contemplate getting like a shade and light palette of kat von d just because i have this tiny little palette from makeup forever that works perfectly and it complements my skin tone perfectly um i can build it up easily I go in underneath my cheekbones, underneath my chin, so that it lessens the it lessens the double chin. I go into the nose. Oh, here's another here's another thing from make from Makeup Forever. I'm actually putting blush that's from Makeup Forever as well. I filled one side with blush and the other side with a mini Viseart palette pan. I'll talk about it later, but currently it's like my favorite go-to little handy dandy product that I bring to the gym or when I'm traveling, this is what I'm, I'm currently bringing. So it just goes over and um, for blush, there are a lot of techniques for blush. Because where you lay your, br your blush will actually change the shape of your face. I can talk about that in another video, but you know. Um, I go in with my eyeshadow. Really sorry, like I sh when the more I'm concentrated with something, the more I forget about the camera. So I've gone in with a mid-tone shade. And I like looking for my crease first because that actually helps me like oh this is my crease and then this is my fake fold so i just push 
my little fluffy Pat McGrath brush in. Okay, I've also gotten my um, my chocolate gold, Too Faced chocolate gold palette, and I'm digging into rolling in dough for like the brow bone highlight color, just so I can get a little bit more pop from my eye. And this is where the battery dies. These guys. So, um, I'm digging into Halifa Dollar, which is um, a nice kind of greenish brown, um, brownish gold kind of shade that I've put on the sides to accentuate the crease even more. I'm going for like a, a soft glam look today. I, I don't want to go with like because I'm, I'm putting in a bold lip I know I'm putting in a bold lip so I wanted like something glam on the eye but not too glam that it's that I'm yeah that I'm like I'm a freaking clown I didn't want to look like a clown so I've also so I'm also digging into old money for the inner corner for the inner corner of my eye and then I blend that together with Holla for a dollar and I'm taking a little bit of new money and putting it on the edge and trying to like wing it out just a bit like pulling it pull pulling the eyeshadow out just so my eyes look kind of longer <laughs> oh the joy of having chinky eyes and not having eyes at all is that you can go ham on your eyes and well you still have no eyes So I'm, I'm dipping into Rich Girl and putting it in the middle of my eye just to give my eye the effect, like the popping effect. Everything I'm doing on my eye is just to make my eye seem bigger. Because, I mean, like, I get there are other people whose eyes are huge and you kind of want to dial your eye makeup like down to make it smaller I mean if that's your intent that's great but everything I do is so that my eyes will look bigger without looking clownish I sometimes look clownish though there's nothing wrong with that I love tricks in Mattel oops so I'm going in with my K palette liquid liner and this time around I normally put in my coal liner first but um, with this kind of with this kind of um, eyeshadow, the whole like metal foil eyeshadow, I feel like going in with liquid first actually helps with disturbing the fallout. I don't know why. I always feel like liquid liner is the seal that stops all your makeup from smudging around in the long run. So only human made a mistake <laughs> you know the good thing about makeup is it's not permanent it's not a tattoo so if you make a mistake don't panic you can always remove it and I will make another mistake on the other side because liquid liner is the makeup version of a gigantic cat who the more you try to hurt it the more you try to control it the more it will mess things up for you so the days when you're relaxed 
when you're not hitting a deadline or you're not trying to rush out of the house, that's when your liquid liner looks awesome and it goes on perfectly. But the days when you really want to make it look perfect, yeah, that's the days when it's like, no, oh, I'm not going to uh, cooperate with you. Huh? So I go in with um, just the the regular coal liner, I use the Makeup Forever Aqua Eyes because it doesn't bleed as much. Um, I just go in and just rub it in. Basically, it's like outlining my eyes, which is, um, I know to a certain point, it's a terrible thing to say. But really, eyeliner is not, it's a terrible thing to say. But Really, eyeliner is not that difficult when it's a pencil, not a brush. Okay, when it's a pencil, it's like you're tracing over your eye. Okay. So I put my eyeliner on the under, like. On the under of my eye only until the middle just because I don't want to close it up when I close it up it's like I'm going for a full Cleopatra look um, I normally apply it till midway of my eye just so that it widens my eye even more and then I go back in with a little eyeshadow just to soften the bottom as well if you have problems with your liquid liner, you can always buff it out with eyeshadow. It is the best thing ever. And then, look! It's a trick that Fendi did for their runway, for the tired models. You put a little highlighter in the middle of your eye. Yeah, I went in with Witch Girl again and put that right there. Um, no, I mean, come on, every single beauty guru does that. It's just that I read a recent article on Vogue that said, Oh, look, it's the trick that Fendi now does on the runway. Nope, every beauty guru does that. So now I'm going to the most dreadful part of my makeup process. Um, yeah, I will mention it later. I used to have bangs, so I used to not give a damn about my eyebrows. So eyebrows were like the last thing I learned. Oh, a little trick with eyebrows that I like doing now in the in the shower is when I get out of the shower, um, so my eyebrows are, are wet, right? I immediately like try to push them up and position them to the way I want them to face. <laughs> to the way I want, the direction I want them to face and if I want them to lay down I pat them down while they are wet okay? and when they're dried I kid you not it's so much easier to control with whatever brow product you have um, whether you're going in with a pomade or a gel or a, um, what you call it, or a pencil it just makes your hair cooperate when you're going in with a brush or a pencil, um, sometimes you'll have like hairs that are facing down or facing up. That's because like the laundry, fix it before, before it dries. You know, when you're hanging up your laundry, when you're hanging up your laundry, you might as well hang it the proper way and then you won't have, you'll have a lot less to iron in like afterwards or a lot less like twisty t-shirts to unfold so get it done in the shower and i know brows are really frustrating but always remember the wonderful i think it was james charles who said this but they are sisters not twins so you really your face Unless you're like Halle Berry, your face is not equal, and that is okay. Anyway, I'm going in with the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. 
and a nice little trick is you pull inwards so you wiggle 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 but your final move is you pull your mascara wand inwards and I feel like it applies more mascara and it lifts your eyes up more the reason why I'm not curling my lashes before doing this which you absolutely should do is because I had them permed greatest thing ever perming your lashes so the easiest part in the entire makeup process is putting on lipstick it's like the cherry on top of the cake I'll probably do a video on like different lip shapes that you can do to change up your lip look because I always like doing a cupid's lip it's like a heart shaped lip where you'll see like the dip of um, yeah you'll see like the dip right in the middle and I feel like it's very flattering on me And I, the last step, which is the most addictive step for me, is the highlighter. I'm going in with Lime Crime Unicorn Highlighter. Yeah. It's this three unicorn highlighter thingy. It is very, very glittery, hey guys. So if you are not a fan of glitters, do not get this palette it is it also has like really odd shades which is what drew me to it because i didn't have a green highlighter so um buyers beware <laughs> but yeah this is where you can insert noony new music and admire yourself in the mirror because you are actually done and i will be start i will start talking soon So this is my full face. I am going to head out for dinner. Um, it really helps. Um, there are a few tips before you begin this whole process that will help you pare down on time. One tip is to know exactly what you're wearing. So I am wearing this pink thing with a blue jumpsuit at the back. Um, know exactly what you're wearing so you can match your makeup with what you're wearing and it gives you a direction when you have a direction it makes it easier for you to pick colors or to make sh to see how stark your look is going to be that's one two is um, moisturize your face moisturize and tone your face right after you get out of the bath so after taking a bath um sorry taking a shower i i realize um not every not every word means the same thing when uh after you get out of the shower immediately tone your face and moisturize your face that is the best primer that you can do to your skin okay after that, um, what do you call this? Have all of your essentials laid out or create like an essentials bottle. Like I have like a essentials pencil, like brush case where I have my contour, my my blusher, my, yeah, um, my eye, my eye, eyeshadow brush. And then I have my blending brush all in one pack. And it's good to have like a few packs of it so that um, you'll always have a clean pack just in case you're rushing in the morning and then clean them all on the weekends so that you'll have like another set um, another thing is to already have like a routine if you do it every every single day you kind of get used to it and it becomes nat second nature to just reach for this product and then that product and that product that's why when teaching like um 
wedding make um, wedding tutorial makeup it kind of gets difficult for me just because I sometimes forget processes that I wouldn't normally do like um, color correction I used to do this every day and now I don't quite bother just because I I recently discovered that I am allergic to dimethicone and um, naked the naked the naked co um, color correcting fluid and their um, how do you call this their concealers all have the heavy dimethicone in them so I now can't use it um, another one is to have um, okay this is the best find I've found so far this is the makeup forever they have these mag magnetic boxes now um, they are 200 pesos which is um, four dollars I'm not gonna blind you with the lights but it's essentially a Z palette with a mirror Z palette with a mirror which is great and um, their blush fits perfectly what I have here are the Viseart um, they have these minis that they sell that are Viseart. I love Viseart eyeshadows. They are by far the easiest to apply. They have barely any fallout. They are awesome. They're heavily pigment, um, not heavily. Uh, they're just pigmented perfectly. Okay, so I have it here, and these are my essential eyeshadow. And then you have your you have your um, blush. Um, you can also fill it with a blush, a contour, and a highlighter. It is awesome. Four dollars can't go wrong. It's really stable. It's cheaper than a G, than a Z palette, and it comes with a mirror. Um, yeah. Um, I always have this as my main palette which has all my browns and my neutrals and a little bit of a hint of red and then I I get like um like an accent palette so yes you can actually use this whole as as a whole palette because you do have matte shades here that um, complement these shades but sometimes I like the Z, the I like using the busy art more but this one is a great complementary palette to that. Yeah. So I hope you found this video helpful in some way. And if you liked it, please subscribe or please leave a comment below. It means a lot. Thanks everyone and goodbye.